Hi everybody, my name is Nicholas, and if you're watching this video, you are auditioning for the Minnesota Brass Front Ensemble. So today I want to talk through a couple of different techniques, but primarily we're going to be talking about uh, independent strokes. So I'm going to walk you through an exercise called alternating one. Um, it's, it's a quick exercise that basically helps build the foundation of practicing our independent strokes between mallet one, two, three, and four. Um, we're also going to be practicing our intervals as well, and we're finally going to finish with uh, independent strokes, so doing some inner mallet work as well. Uh, so to start off today, I want to walk everybody through just the basic four mallet grip. So first off, what I like to do is think of your hand that's split up into two parts. So you have your index finger and your middle finger go one way, your ring and pinky finger go the other way. Okay, so you wanna have it just like this. You wanna take your, this is gonna be your outer mallet. You wanna place it in between the two here and wrap these two, the index and pinky finger around it, okay? So you have one mallet sort of just lodged in between those two and you have the other three, almost like a claw sticking out, okay? Now you wanna take your other mallet. What I like to do is I like to take it and place it in the center of my palm first then, after that, you're going to use these three fingers to hook around the mallet. So you're gonna take your, fing your in uh, middle finger, excuse me, it's going to sort of hold the mallet in place while these other two fingers, your thumb and index finger, are basically what, it's, it creates what's called the fulcrum. So you have your pointer finger here, it's going to sort of wrap around, and that mallet's gonna rest on that first knuckle there and then your thumb is going to be, the pad of your thumb, I should say, is gonna be placed on top of that over the mallet, which is resting on the first knuckle of your index finger. What I like to think of is if you put like a, a nail through your thumb, it should go through your thumb, the mallet, and then your index finger. There should not be, it should not be where your index finger is down here or too far up. It should be a nice sort of in the middle where your, your pointer finger isn't like straight up, but not completely curved in. It's just like a little hook like that, okay? And you're gonna repeat that for the other side, just like that, okay? So we have our grip, just a basic overview of our grip. Um, so we're gonna be talking about playing our posture first before we start even playing the exercise. So when you stand behind the keyboard, you wanna make sure that your, of course, feet are flat on the ground, shoulders are back, you are facing, you know, right in kind of the, your belly button's facing in the center of where you're, going to be playing. So if you're starting, let's say, on a C up down here, and then like the highest note you're gonna be playing is a G up here, you wanna be somewhere in the middle, okay? You don't wanna be like too far off to the side where you have your mallets over here, or the other way where you're having to sort of stretch. You always wanna keep yourself centered with the keyboard, okay? So for this exercise, um, alternating one, we are going to be holding fifths, okay? This is really important to rest your mallets over the keyboard, keep your wrists nice and low. You should be able to reach out with your pinky and touch the keyboard, okay? You don't want your wrists to be up too high to where your mallets are, you know, kind of bending down, but you also don't wanna to be too low where you're having to like hit the shafts on the keys as well, okay? So just, I would hold about a mezzo piano height. Make sure you're holding a decent interval to where both mallets are over the center of each of the keys in each, so we have C, G, C, G, okay? It's really important, so the mechanics of this exercise basically are one mallet is gonna be moving while the other one is stationary. So in this case, when we start off the exercise, our mallet one is gonna be moving while our mallet two stays down in that resting mezzo piano position. So we're gonna rotate our wrist up while this mallet stays down, and then we're gonna strike the keyboard. Okay, that's basically gonna trigger mallet two to come up. Okay, and then mallet one is gonna stick down. See, and then mallet two triggers mallet one to go back up. So we can speed it up a little bit. Okay, 
So you want to make sure you put enough velocity into the keyboard as well so you're getting a nice warm sound um, digging into the key. Not You don't want it to just be like touching the outside of the, uh, the bar. You want it to be digging into the, to the center of it and into the core of the mallet, okay? Now, same thing with our right hands. You're starting with mallet three. You're rotating up. That's going to trigger mallet four to go up. Mallet three is going to go back up. Mallet four is going to go back up. Okay, now do you see as each time I rotate the other mallet does not go up with the other mallet? It stays down. You want to try your best to keep the other mallet staying down as you rotate. It's not going to be perfect, but you want to do your best to just keep it around mezzo piano. Um, and another really important aspect of this exercise is that you're holding the correct interval. So, you know, a really common mistake with this exercise is if you're holding an interval that is either too, uh, too wide or too short, for instance, if you're holding a sixth or a fourth, you have basically what happens is you're ending up swiping at the keys, which is going to affect your note accuracy and your sound quality. So if you're, um, if you're holding a fourth, for example, you're going to have to go back and forth to make sure you hit the right keys, whereas we want the mallets to be resting over the, the correct notes we're playing, okay, and going up and down. We don't need any extra motion, okay? So that's a basic overview of the technique and what, you know, the mechanics of the actual exercise. The exercise itself starts on C and G in fifths with the left and right hand, and we shift chromatically. So we go from C, G, C, G up to C sharp, G sharp. We keep doing that. Okay, we go all the way up to A, A, E, A, E. And then we go down, okay? We go back down to C. And then we repeat that um, uh, last phrase once more, but before we move on to the next version of the exercise. So I'm gonna go ahead, turn on the metronome, and we're gonna play through version A of alternating one. aspect of this version you know you can play it in many different time signatures tempos um, this is a seven eight exercise so we're going one two three four five six seven when we shift up to that C sharp and G sharp we are starting on mallet two and four so we're going like that okay another important thing to remember when we're shifting is we're not adding any additional motion um, with our wrists going up and down. We don't want to be lifting. We want to imagine our hands as if they're on a track and they're just shifting uh, horizontally, not vertically. We don't want any other vertical motion. The only vertical motion we want is from the actual mallets going up and down playing the keys. It's really important to remember, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and move on to uh, version B of this exercise, which is uh, it turns the eighth note pattern into 16th notes. So basically all we're doing the left hand is going to be playing the same thing, right? So it's still the eighth note, you know, skeleton. 
but now we're adding in, we're breaking it up with our right hand so that they're 16th notes. So instead of playing one, two, or sorry, one, three, two, four, we're playing one, three, two, four. Okay. So if you get lost during the exercise, it can be a little tricky, especially in seven, eight, um, breaking up your hands like that, especially when you're shifting, you're in a different time signature. You wanna think about your left hand. Your left hand is always doing the same thing, going from, you know, playing eighth notes, shifting up and down the keyboard, just like we did in version A. So I'm gonna go ahead and play version B for you. before with swiping and holding the correct intervals this tends to be an issue on version B um, a lot well not a lot more but for me at least it tends to be something that I struggle with more because I have more to focus on between you know breaking my hands up making sure I'm subdividing while playing these 16th notes and shifting chromatically up the key up and down the keyboard um, it just you want to make sure that those intervals because for instance, in the lower part of the keyboard, you're gonna to have to hold a little bit wider of an interval than as you get higher and higher. So you just wanna be mindful of that as you continue throughout the exercise. You know, this is a great exercise to, um, you know, build a lot of fundamentals to play fast permutated, you know, rhythms, whether that be in like show music or other exercises. It's just a really good, uh, you know, technique to, to get down right away because a lot of show music and a lot of fast um, parts in, in you know, any sort of music is based on this. So, you know, we're talking on the subject of single independence. We're now gonna move on to uh, some inner mallet uh, work. So some inner mallets, inside mallet, people call it all different types of things. So there are a lot of different types of ways to approach this. The way that I have always approached it and the way I was taught is to your outer mallets while they're not playing are gonna be resting at about a mezzo piano, just like we did in the alternating exercise. So I'm, I'm on middle C right here. I'm holding the same position I was when I was doing the um, alternating, about a fifth apart. Some people like to hold a little smaller, some a little bigger. I would try to aim for about a fifth um, in each hand. Okay, so we have our inner mallets centered over C here. So if we wanna go ahead and look at the mechanics of this, it's pretty much almost identical to our, uh, to alternating. So if I just take this hand, put it away, we're basically rotating up. This mallet is staying as close to the keyboard or mezzo piano as possible. This mallet is rebounding back up to the place it was at, okay? It's called the piston stroke. Okay, so one thing to watch for with this exercise as well, um, or anytime you're playing inside mallets, is your outer mallet should sort of, you know, it doesn't have to be perfectly still. It's, it's pretty hard to keep it perfectly still. It should just be rotating on its axis a little bit and sort of following the path of that inside mallet. But one thing you wanna watch out for is it should not be kind of jutting out side to side. 
that's how you know there's an issue with either your interval or your rotation. You know, you always wanna make sure that when you're looking at your wrist, you can put a straight line down here as you're playing intermallets. You should never have your wrists like this or too far out like that. That can cause injury and that's what's gonna cause that sort of erratic movement of that outer mallet. So you wanna watch for that and make sure you're following all of those, you know, fundamentals we talked about at the beginning with just your, uh, your body placement behind the keyboard and making sure you're holding your mallet correctly. Okay, so we, I'll also demonstrate with my right hand here. Some, something that you can also try before you start breaking the hands up into playing 16th notes is, you know, just go pick, pick like a third that you like, you know, maybe C and E and just playing. Okay, so we're watching for that interval to stay at a fifth. Okay, I'm even noticing with myself that one of my mouths is starting to do a little bit of that, uh, side to side motion that we don't want. So I'm gonna check my interval, make sure I'm holding my mallets down. Okay, another important thing to remember while doing alternating and inner mallets is your perch is, some people call it your perch, it's called your fulcrum. Um, keeping that pointer finger wrapped around the inner mallet and not too far down. So you don't want to squeeze and have it disappear and have your thumb be poking out, but you also don't want to have it straight up on top of the mallet. You want to have it wrapped around gently. You don't want to have any excess pressure on your thumb. If your thumbnail turns a lighter color, that's not good. You want to make sure that the pad of your thumb is flat against the mallet. You always wanna be checking these things while you're playing inner mallets or pretty much any exercise. Okay, so we did our eighth notes. Now we're gonna break it up, okay? So we see our outer mallets are pretty low. up to the top of the stroke we're we're still digging into the keyboard but we're not sticking down too much we're still lifting that sound out of the keyboard if that makes sense we're giving good velocity but we're making sure we're lifting up as well to you know kind of round out the sound round out the stroke make, making everything look nice with the mallets as well so one exercise i'm going to play for you today is um a green scale so green is a pretty universal exercise that a lot of people play uh, a lot of ensembles have different variations of it, but basically you go up and down the keyboard. It's a very scalar exercise. I'm not gonna describe it too much. I'll just go ahead and play it for you um, with the inside mallet. a series of 16th notes on the the first note of the exercise that's called the check that sort of gives your hands an opportunity to make sure you're playing in time making sure you're locking in with the metronome before you go up and down the scale so you, that check should basically replicate the rest of the exercise in terms of tempo sound quality technique you shouldn't really change anything other than the fact that you're just shifting up and down the keyboard okay another important thing to remember is your body movement as you're going up and down the keyboard, you wanna make sure that you aren't turning your torso. You know, if I were to go, okay, we don't want that. We wanna make sure that we're, you know, moving along so that that belly button is kind of in the center of these two mouths. So we have, okay, so you just move side to side, almost like you're on a track, okay? So that basically summarizes independent strokes. So we've reviewed again, alternating one, where we have eighth notes. Just a brief review, we wanna make sure that our hands 
um, are low to the keyboard. Our pinkies can re reach out and touch the keyboard. We don't want our wrists up too high. We don't want them too low to where the shots are hitting them. We want them to be resting at a nice mezzo piano, okay? We talked about lifting these two mallets while the other resting mallets stay down at mezzo piano. We don't want them to lift with the mallets, okay? We talked about shifting. We don't want any additional vertical movement. We just want horizontal movement, almost as if our hands are on a track, okay? Um, and then we broke, we broke it up into version B, where we have 16th notes. Okay, making sure we're not swiping, we're holding the correct interval. And finally, we talked about the independent strokes. Uh, sorry, we've been talking about the independent strokes, but the inner mallets. Okay, holding about a fifth, uh, we want to make sure that we're checking our pointer finger, that it's nice and curved here, and your thumb is on top of it. It's not too low, it's not too high. Okay, we were talking about using the piston stroke, giving enough velocity where our mallets aren't sticking into the keyboard too much, but we're still lifting the sound out of the keyboard. Okay, and those outer mallets are gonna stay relatively still, resting at about a mezzo piano height. Okay, so that is today's video, and I hope you enjoyed. It's, you know, a lot of information at once, but these are very important fundamentals to um, you know, get down and practice. And this doesn't really go away. This is something that, you know, years and years into playing that you are going to want to review and always come back to, to um, when you're practicing, you know, maybe a new excerpt of music or show music or something like that. Uh, it all boils down to this technique. So I hope you enjoy the video and thank you for watching.